My name is Justin Laborde. Welcome to the day in the life of the firefighter. Fire, what is the address of the emergency? Was on fire. Local calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene stating fire in the stairwells as well. 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 Fire in the Two-story multi-family. We have a small complaint showing up. Alpha side. I'll be assuming command. Remain the offensive strategy. We do have extension to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, Next column off three, confirmed multi-family structure fire. So welcome to day two, station 12. Um, this is our ladder. We just got back from a run this morning, uh, diabetic wake up. Um, so day two is a little bit different than day one because we worked that 48 hour shift. Um, so usually day one, I come through, I'm checking the rig, making sure that we have all our equipment. Um, and then I know it's there for day two. Um, so I line up all my stuff, put my bunker gear in here. Um, then I'll jump up. We have our packs in the seat here. So I generally pull my pack down. This is after I've got everything um, connected, ready to go. I'm going to check my air. So you can see here, I'm going to check my level. And then I take my mask, check and make sure that my lights work. Put my mask on. Breathe down all my air, make sure everything works. Make sure that my mask is clean. Generally, those lights There we go. So, as you know in the fire service, things are sporadic, so we're about to run an MBA. Yeah,
hour. Um, this is a fall victim. We don't know what the size of the patient might be. Uh, we don't know where they're at. Uh, you know, if they're, if they're a larger patient than down in the basement, you're going to need more manpower than just two medics. Uh, so the fire department comes, and, or the fire truck comes, and uh, this assists with that, uh, especially if they're critical patients. So, We've got another run. Alright, gentlemen, it's alright. I'm gonna lose it. Alright. Ladder 12. Be false alarm, bird food, you pick up. Ladder 12 copies in service, thank you. That was a uh, false alarm. Somebody burned some food, as I said earlier. Uh, luckily, they were able to reset the system and uh, ensure that there is no risk of fire so uh, we got the call now we're back in service we'll go continue shopping cooking as a firefighter um, that's a big part of what we do here at station 12 we cook on the first day we do a lunch and a dinner and then the second day we do a brunch and a dinner so Somebody's always cooking, um, and it's four meals. Um, and these guys will definitely uh, talk to you about it if your cooking's not that good. So make sure you brush up on your cooking skills. Finger pretty close to using this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are what you Solid brown. Three bells. Time to eat, boys. <laughs> <laughs> This is a uh, dish dishes time since our dishwasher is broke, so you gotta be good at washing dishes. One of the daily station chores. Here, I'll feed it to the board while you're doing dishes. <laughs> Uh, no, dude, I'm good, man. We're almost done. We got a couple more. So we'll be good. Appreciate it, though. Let me get over here and uh, try it for you. All right, cool. Thank you. This logo here is is pretty cool for us. It's it's a prideful thing in the fact that like every station is its own. So you know if you see this, like the Pirates of Broadway or wherever, right? They're on scene, fighting fire, doing whatever. Um, so it's kind of our station pride, and each station has a different logo. Um, like Engine 11, they're the Main Street Screamers because they have downtown Littleton um, and it's Main Street that they run through. So each crew kind of has their own logo that they come up with. Um, and then we have our station pride and we wear them on our shirts. Um, and we have stickers and stuff to give away as well. Uh, this truck here at 12, Ladder 12, this is uh, named the Black Pearl, Black Pearl of uh, Broadway here. Um, so we have our logo up there. You can see we have our coconut and the uh, flag hanging on the inside. So at this station, we obviously have our ladder truck here, um, but we also run a battalion chief for battalion two. Um, and then we run a medic unit on the other side, which you'll see. Um, this here, this is our reserve um, for the department. It's not the de our reserve for this station, um, but it's just a house for it. So we keep it here at the station just in case any of our truck companies go down, they can um, get on a reserve and it's ready to go. Uh, this is the Arapaho Rescue Patrol room um, with our community risk reduction specialist. Um, so they, they occupy this side of the, of the building and run all their classes and stuff out of that. Over here, this is our tool room. Um, so for rehabbing tools or we need to fix something um, or fuel something up, paint something, this is where we keep all of that equipment. Um, so we can do our in-house station projects. This is going to be our cascade system. Um, so at this station here, we have the ability to fill bottles um, if they've been breathed down because of a fire, hazardous response, or training. 
Um, so we can use our cascade system here to fill our bottles to that 5,500 capacity. One of the things that's my responsibility as a firefighter is to make sure that our bottles are full and that we don't have an excess of empty bottles. So we only have one empty bottle, um, so I'm not going to worry about filling it right now. But uh, we want to make sure that we have a ready reserve for any rig that needs bottles to be swapped. Work our way to the other side. Um, this is one of our training props that we have here at the station. Um, it's just a steel door. We use this for in-house training on forcible entry. Um, we can close it and put some wood in the back side. And they go right in this, these slots here so we can make it more difficult the more, um, the more thick, with thicker wood makes this prop more difficult to open. Um, so we can do an inside swinging door or an outside swinging door depending on uh, what the scenario is and we can practice that here in the house. We have uh, the air truck. Um, Arapaho Rescue Patrol is responsible for this truck. Um, they run it to the scene if we have a fire and we need more air. It has a cascade system on it and it has a ton of spare bottles so that we can continue to work on the scene if it's, if it's for an extended period of time. Uh, so one of the daily duties for a firefighter, making sure that our laundry is taken care of. These are all the truck towels that we use throughout the shift. Um, that we use just to clean the rigs or clean anything up outside in the bay. This is going to be our bunker um, closet, I suppose. So this is where we store all our bunker gear. Uh, we try to keep it outside of the general bay area just because of all the ex uh, diesel exhaust and every all the particles that can settle on it. So we try to keep it as secluded as possible, um, just to ensure that if it's clean gear, it's actually clean gear and not getting contaminated slowly over time. That's one of the cool things about South Metro here is we're really um, health conscientious and make sure that we're trying to do our best to prevent cancer um, or any other diseases that may come from firefighting um, that we receive from exposure or anything like that. This is going to be the BC's office. This is where the big man in charge sits. And you can see he's in his natural habitat on the computer typing away. Looking at telestaff. Actually, video. Oh my God. But anyway, this is where the BC is. He's got his own bedroom and bathroom back there, um, but his office. So he has a nice, quiet space in order to do the work that he needs to get done. Over here, this is going to be the firefighter office. We have Engineer Schultz in here, currently watching some fire videos get studied up, so you can be the best of the best. Um, so this is where the firefighters and the uh, station officer or the paramedics will come to do their reports, um, study, do training, um, anything that needs to be done on the computer, this is where we do it. It's going to be our honorary guest, uh, paramedic Brandon Howard as a pirate. Um, somebody had bought this pirate, they brought it to the station and uh, just used it as a mascot. So it sits here. Um, I can't lie to you, it scares me every time I come downstairs and through the door in the dark, gets me every time. We'll go upstairs. This up here, this is going to be where the bunk rooms are, um, laundry. So I got some towels here. Like I said, this is another responsibility of the firefighter. Um, somebody's got their clothes in there right now, so I'm just going to put it in the laundry basket. Then when we swap out, we'll uh, clean it up. I got some more towels here. Just make sure we're cleaning it up, doing our daily chores. This is going to be what a typical bedroom or bunk room looks like here at South Metro. Um, just basically a place for me to study if I need to in quiet um, and sleep. Be where we hang out, watch TV, um, just kind of rest up. That way, uh, that way we're rest, recovered, ready to run calls. Um, so this is going to be our living room here, kitchen, table. This is where we spend a lot of time. This is this is the heart of the firehouse right here. This is where everybody gathers. Uh, we talk about things, we solve the world problems at the kitchen table. This is where it all takes place. Um, this is where we do our physical uh, training, our PT, uh, making sure that we're fit and ready to run the job, run any call or do any jobs that we have uh, for the day. So uh, we spend probably about an hour a day uh, in this room. Not everybody all at once, it just depends. Um, sometime I'm going to come in here later on, get a quick workout in, make sure that I'm physically fit for duty, um, so that I'm not the weak link. Left on Broadway. And on let's Broadway. go to uh, Little Tip Boulevard and go left on Little Tip Boulevard. Left on. Okay. Wednesdays from 6 p.m.
p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. And it's behind the scenes tour of South Metro Fire Rescue for what turns into a select group of 18 to 20 people. Okay. <laughs> seeing the fire truck go by and I get to ride it every day. A lot of people look at the fire truck and they're like, oh man, all these guys do is fight fire. And that's not necessarily true. There's a lot of things that we do. So um, water leaks, car accidents, medicals is the majority of our calls. Um, and fires do happen, but they don't happen um, just super often, right? I, I think that there's just a lot of newer construction, a lot of people that um, are well versed because we have a great prevention program. So I, I think that there's a lot of education that goes into it and, and prevention and that's part of our job. Yep, you got it, three yeah. bags. Just trying to get some dinner here and uh, sure enough, got another call. Uh, right on the boulevard. You want a line, Jeff? Yeah. Medics have been crying about their food that's been sitting in our truck, so we'll get them fed so they're not hangry. Dinner time. I was gonna call at some sometime during dinner, so usually we're leaving some food somewhere. We may be in the middle of eating and get a call and then come back and try to finish. Alright, so one of the things that we gotta do as a firefighter, the work is not all glamorous. We gotta clean the toilets. Make sure that our station is ready and presentable for the next crew. Yeah. That's the whole goal. I think with the majority of anything that you touch, the goal is to leave it better than you found it. And making sure that it's presentable and ready to go for the next crew. At South Metro, everybody tries to take a part in it. Uh, I'll be 100% honest with you. We look for the probies to take initiative and at least start the process. but. We're all looking to do work. We, we don't just expect the probie to do everything. So it looks good on your behalf if you start cleaning, but the crews will always come help you finish. So that's kind of how we, we work it here. And that, that just leaves your reputation uh, in a good standing. Reputations are really, really hard to build and they take seconds to break. So that's why it's important to make sure you put your best foot forward and uh, try and take care of your crew because they'll take care of you too. Uh, so as you can see, riding along with me today in the day of the life of a firefighter, there's a lot that we do. Um, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of knowledge that you need to know. But the best part about going and applying for South Metro now that the job posting's open is that you only have to be 18 and you don't have to have your EMT certification to get in the door. All that stuff will be taken care of uh, when you get your your job. The perfect candidate that we're looking for, um, in my opinion, they need to have three traits. That's going to be good character, a great attitude, and work ethic. None of those take any talent whatsoever. There's no talent involved in any of this. 
So if you have those three traits, we can teach you everything else. That's going to be the key. Um, basically, it comes down to showing up at the right place, the right time, and the right uniform. As long as you can do that, we can get you where you need to go. It's going to be a hard process. It's going to be a long process. Uh, but we have the skills and the knowledge to teach our younger, newer uh, candidates how to be a great firefighter. With Aaron, oh, we got a call. Response. No day is ever the same. that nice and straight for me okay Big poke, move. so my favorite part about being a firefighter is the controlled chaos that we have throughout the day so you never know what you're gonna run on you could it could be a medical something like we're just picking somebody up uh, which we call lift assist to run in a car fire to you're running the next five medicals and they're um, in our mind like they're they're benign right they're they're not life-threatening, but they do need help um, to just something outlandish, right? Like, I mean, you think about the crazy scenario you can think of, and we've probably done it at some point. Maybe not me and myself, uh, but people have. So that's my favorite part is just the, the controlled chaos and never knowing what's going to come next, never knowing what, what's going to get interrupted, where you're going to be, where you're going to go. Yeah, I mean, like, that. I guess, like, the worst part of the job would be that we're working in a community um, and it's and it's a, a community of people that you enjoy that you want to see succeed um, and, and when people are hurt that 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 sucks, right? Like it's it's hard especially when they're it's life-altering um, I've had a couple calls where people have lost limbs and it's like That's that's hard. He wrote a note because he couldn't talk he had a trach and he basically said that he, we saved his life and that was that was a tough one. <laughs> it brings tears in my eyes every time, man. I mean, that was his life will never be the same. So. The best way that I can explain it to the public, to people that don't run 911 calls at night, would be set your alarm randomly throughout the night, probably at a minimum of three times, and then as many, up to as many times as you want. And when that alarm goes off, get out of bed, get your clothes on, get in your car, go drive to a random place come back, park your car, and then try to go back to bed. That's, that's what it's like. And you got 90 seconds to get out the door, and that's, that's even putting your bunker gear on. Like if we're running a, a car accident, we have to have our bunker gear on and our safety vests, and we're out the door. So you got to wake up and be ready to go. Uh, we were able to sleep all night. Pretty fortunate. Um, the medic got up once and uh, ended up getting canceled right away anyway. But yeah, we, we were able to sleep all last night, which was different than the first night. We, we were up and running call, so it was nice. Uh, now we'll wait for the other crew to come in. One of them, Dave, he's already here. And uh, then we'll do our crew swap and go home. Uh, I just hope you guys enjoyed following uh, following me around in the day of life of a firefighter and uh, hopefully none of this stuff scares you too much. Come apply, come work with us, we'd love to have you.